you in and join us for teas, Captain. Oh, thank you, Mrs. L. I've been counting on you to come over to Green Gables now that you've moved into the manse. I've given Elspeth tremendous reports about your home baking and your red currant wine, Miss mm -hmm. Cuthbert. She's anxious to learn your secrets. Well, I'm sure that a wife of a new minister has more things on her mind in terms of familiarizing herself with the congregation. Oh, Prince Edward Island is very different in Europe, and I'm very pleased to be living in Avonlea. Being here must be quite a thrill for you too, Anne. Oh, I made sure I enjoyed everything in advance. Looking forward to things is half the pleasure of them. And nothing can prevent one from having the fun of looking forward to something. Blessed is he that expects nothing, for he shall not be disappointed. Oh no, Mrs. Lynn. I think it would be much worse to expect nothing than to be disappointed. Marilla has given me strict instructions not to talk your head off. I do have a habit of chattering on so. Why, if I could imagine myself as a bird, a magpie would probably be the closest thing I could resemble. <laughs> I think Mrs. Allen is a natural beauty, don't you? She's very pretty. But Mrs. Lynn says she sets a terrible example because she's a foreigner and she dresses far too fashionably. They've only been married a little while. Apparently, she met him on a tour of the Holy Land. Well, seeing as she's only been a minister's wife for a little while, one should make allowances, especially when they've just arrived in the community. Oh, Diana, I have always dreamed of being in a three-legged race at a picnic. Would you do me the honor of being my partner? But there aren't any other girls in it. You're a sturdy-looking girl, and I'm fast. I know we'd stand a good chance. All right. Come on! It has been a remarkable year for me, Mrs. Allen. Oh, except for geometry. I'm such a dunce at it. I was a dunce at geometry too, Anne, and it hasn't hurt me. You don't know how that encourages me. I think I'd like to be a minister's wife someday. No, not really. Anyway, I'm not very good at my job. One has to be quite modest and virtuous if one is to be a successful minister's wife, you know, Anne? Some people are naturally good, I guess, and others must work at it. I'm afraid I'm one of the others. No matter how hard I try, I never make as much of a success at it as those who are naturally good. It's a lot like geometry for me in that respect. You cannot please everyone. You must be yourself first and foremost. Huh? But don't quote me. I'll be as silent as the dead. Come along, we don't have much time. Listen, Diana and her mother had a great row while I was visiting. Mrs. Berry forbade Diana to see you again. And I said privately to myself, this simply wouldn't do. Now, I got Diana out of the house by taking her for a walk. She's waiting for you in the wood. Dear Mrs. Allen, you are a true kindred spirit. I don't know how I'll ever repay you. Now run, you don't have any time. I don't want Mrs. Berry to join you on our walk. And now, run. Any particular young men you lovely ladies are waiting for? Good evening, Reverend. Mrs. Allen. <laughs> he was hoping there might still be some place for himself. Young men are all very well in their place, but it doesn't do to drag them into everything, does it, Diana? We were seriously thinking of promising each other never to marry, but to be nice old maids and live together forever. <sighs> <laughs> she hasn't quite made up her mind, though. You can never be too careful what uh, ideals you acquire in youth, for they are the foundation of your future life. Oh, Robert, don't be so stuffy. I'm sure Diana would find it nobler to marry some wild, dashing young man and reform him, hmm? as I intend to reform you. Now, will you kindly request the words from this Auburn hair beauty before she decides to wither away into spinsterhood? Hmm? May I? 
You'll excuse me if I steal her away again, won't you? There are so many people waiting to meet our young Miss Shirley. Come on over here. Please excuse me. I don't mean to be rude, but there is someone I absolutely must speak with. I'll return right away, I promise. Very well, dear. But do hurry. I have important people waiting. Oh, Anne, your voice was charming, and you interpreted the selections beautifully. Thank you, Mrs. Allen. I must have done something right, only I was in such a tizzy it had a very bad effect on my imagination. I know, dear. Hurry along now. He's hitching up his buggy at the end of the veranda. Well, Miss Shirley, good day to you. Good day, Mr. Sadler. It's been a long way since I caught you chasing my cows. I've heard uh, all sorts of rumors about your recent successes. You've forgotten it was Charlie Sloan, not your cows I was chasing. <laughs> well, I'm proud to say I knew you when. You have certainly put Evanlee on the map. I expect uh, you're probably anxious to be leaving right away, though. I'm tired of being studious, but I'm sure I'll have a whole new set of ambitions after three glorious months of vacation. The Board of Trustees hoped uh, you might be interested in staying on to teach. I'm not sure I would, after what you did to poor Mr. Phillips. Oh, well, no. Um, a couple of our former students will be staying. The new bridge trustees have offered uh, Jane their school. And Gilbert Blythe is going to teach here. Yes, it's a shame he's not going to college. Well, uh, uh, if you decide uh, to postpone Redmond for a year, the comedy school still needs a teacher. And we'd be pleased to have you stay, even if it is only for a year. You could earn a little extra money to get you started, you know. I appreciate the consideration, Mr. Sadler. And it breaks my heart to have to leave here again. But ambition calls me forth. As you like, Miss Shirley. Anne! Anne! Sister <laughs> Helen, I was enjoying the sunset so much, I didn't think to stop. Oh, you have enough on your mind, I'm sure. How are you keeping? It seems like disloyalty to Matthew, somehow to find pleasure in all these things now that he's gone. Somehow it seems like I oughtn't to. When Matthew was here, he liked to hear you laugh and to know you found pleasure in the world around you. That's as he would want it. 